What's up YouTube? Um, today we're going to be doing a Jean d'Arc 1TC guide. Um, it's not going to be just like a build order, but I'm going to talk about like how to play extremely aggressive with Jean d'Arc in different situations and yeah, how to react to different things that your opponent does and in the game quickly. So um, yeah, let's dive into it. Um, before we get started, this was my random Takonk account and I had 75% win rate with John Dark on that account as I went to Conk. And this is my main account. And I have so far with John Dark. Um, that's versus. So far with John Dark, I have a 68% win rate on my main account. So the 1TC build is very strong. And um, you can end the game in Feudal or end the game in Early Castle. So that's what we're going to go into today is like how to either end the game in Feudal or Early Castle on a 1TC build against any Civ, any situation. And I'm just going to tell you like how to react to different things your opponent might be doing, what kind of units to go for in what situations, and show you my basic opening build order. So let's start with the basic, the basic build order and yeah, we'll go from there. So... In the beginning, um, pretty much, like, when the, the new season dropped and the DLC dropped, everybody was doing, like, the build where John Dark just solo builds the landmarks or so that she can level up by the time you get Feudal. Um, honestly, I don't like this build at all anymore. I'd much prefer to get a Knight out as quickly as possible. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, very simple, straightforward build. All the villagers immediately go on Sheep. Use Jean to build the house so she gets more XP. Seven onto food total. And then we're gonna go three on I mean uh four on the gold actually. So I'm gonna just fast forward a little bit here at the beginning. Because this is very basic stuff. Um yeah. There's the fourth on gold. Now we're going to uh do two on the wood. And now when we build the landmark. Um, you can even set this up beforehand. I've seen players doing that, which is probably smarter than how I do it. Um, you could take three villagers beforehand, nice. right? And set them to, like, control group three. So we're going to build the landmark with three villagers, including Jean. So it's easier if you get two regular villagers and Jean, and you make a little control group for them. And that way, the moment the landmark is ready to build, you can, you know, turn in their food and build it. We're gonna go up to two on wood so right now we're seven food two uh wood four gold but now we're building the landmark so it's going down to four on food and uh after the two on wood we're gonna start sending villagers to food again but make sure that john is one of the three villagers building the landmark so the reason we're doing three and not two not one not four this is this provides the best night timing without losing too much uh gather rate and john builds a little bit faster than like a regular villager so um you don't need to have four villagers like you would with french right, to get your landmark up at a decent time and um yeah cue your new villagers to food that way we're gonna have enough for a night right away i'm gonna speed it up a little bit so it's important to get value out of your early nights i already have videos from a long time ago where I talked about this with French, but we're going to talk about it again today. Um, like, if you're rushing, you're rushing this to get knights out to do damage. You're not rushing this to get a knight that sits right here in front of your school of cavalry and does nothing, which is, you know, it's, not, it's a mistake that lots of low leaguers make, but it's okay. Um, we're here to change that, right? Let's send your first knight straight across the map. And, um, my scout's already looking around his base, like, where can I do damage, right? And at this point, I saw he was super heavy on the woods, so that's why I went to go check. I went immediately to go check, is there fishing? There is no fishing, so maybe it's a second TC. And those were my thoughts. Now, the knight, um, the moment I had enough food, bam, knight and Q. And from here, what I like to do is, um... Send John to build a mill. She'll get more XP that way. And she's going to be leveling up a little bit later. But look, you see it's 418. We've already had a knight in queue for a couple seconds now. And yeah, I just think this leads to a much stronger early feudal. 
<clears throat> so my scout is going to go back now. Like, there's no fishing, right? So we got to find where to do damage. And this is something, like, this right here, this first, this first night can win you so many games. Like, I, I need you guys to remember, this game is against a, he's Conqueror 1 currently, and he had previously hit Conqueror 3 last season. So, he's not like a solid Conqueror 3 who, like, just destroys everybody, but he had hit Conqueror 3. So, this is a higher level player than most of you are going to be playing against. I don't even have my second knight in queue just yet. But, um, yeah, it's really important to do damage with the first knight. And I'm not even talking too much about the macro because I want to, sh I want to show you guys how to get good value with your first knight, so... But before we continue, let's talk a little bit about the macro. So, at this point, I'm queuing new villagers to wood because I want to get a second production building. So I'm going up to, like, six on wood, and I don't have a second knight in the queue right now, which is a mistake, and that's because I have too many villagers queued. So this is one of those builds where you really need to, like, only have, like, one villager queued at a time for now while you're trying to build knights, and that's just kind of how it is, but you also don't want to idle your TC, so it's something you've got to really practice and be careful about. Now, let's talk, go back to the knights. Uh, I shouldn't go any more on wood. If I do, I'll probably reallocate them. But, um, six on wood is fine until you get a couple production buildings. It also depends on what you're going for, right? If you're going for heavy knights, you don't need any more on wood. But if you're going for heavy archers, you would need a lot on wood, right? So, um, but let's just talk about the early knight for a moment. So I scout. He's still mining the stone. And you can tell by clicking on the stone, right, that he's got more than enough for a TC. He definitely wants to build a TC. So where is it going to go? That's the big question. And I actually could have attacked these villagers with the knight, but I didn't see that. I was just looking for the TC. So they're kind of actually hard to see when they're, like, really close to the Grand Wine right there. But we just want to find this TC, so that's what we're doing. Second knight's coming out as well. And you can see my scout and the knight, they perfectly get over here. Like, not as good as a pro, maybe, but perfectly in time for the town center. And this is going to be really, really bad for my opponent here. And you really want to um, stay out of range of the TC, like... You don't want to dive too far under. You want to keep kiting back in and out. So right now I've killed zero villagers and lost the scout. Not the best. And the knight's already down to 70 health. Not the best. But my second knight's here. Bam. One kill. Villagers are idle. Notice how I immediately pull back this low health knight so that the new, the new knight can tank the damage from the TC. And we just don't, we don't dive too far in. We turn around. I was going to try to get that kill, but don't get too greedy. I don't want to take too much damage. Meanwhile, Jean is fighting the boar. She actually maybe could have even helped even more over here, but I just let her go ahead and kill this boar for the XP. Um, and you can see we went up to 7 on wood, which was probably a bit too much. And now we're going up to 8 on gold, which is also probably a bit too much. But I'm really focused on the knight micro here, because like I said, this knight micro can win you games. Um, but with the macro, you probably want to go up to about 6 on gold for now. And then start queuing to food again, right? So I would go... You're going to have um, about 10 on food here. After the initial couple nights. And then um, go to 6 on wood. And then 6 on gold. And then start queuing to food again. And um, yeah, like I said, you're going to mess this up sometimes if you're really focused on microing your knights. And that's okay because look how much value we're going to get here. So, so far we've delayed the TC a little bit and we've killed one villager. Both knights are still alive. And we're going in again. And that knight's going a little bit too far, but we killed a villager. We killed another villager. Pull out the low health knight. And he's, look at how much this TC is delayed. And we've killed three villagers so far and all we lost is a scout. And, by the way, the knights are still here. They can still do more. He comes out to try to build it again. Bam, both knights go in. Kills his scout. 
More idle time. Another dead villager. Another dead villager. Another dead villager. Look at these knights. We fight. We just now lost the first knight. There's six dead vills, and the TC has been delayed. Horribly. Now, at my level, this game is already over. But, because I know exactly how to end the game from here. I've killed six villagers. There's no way I'm going to lose. But we're going to talk about what you do from here so that you guys don't throw these kind of games as well. Once again, I messed up a lot of the macro here. I've got too many on gold. I probably mined too much wood as well. But, with the first two nights, we won the whole game. So, like, this is... This is really important for you guys to, like, to practice doing this kind of thing with your knights. I know it's like, I know some people are like, oh, I don't like to send my knights forward. Or I don't like to send my units forward and attack or raid because I attack, you know, the gold mine. And then I look away for one second and three spears killed the knight and then the knight's gone. Well, that's what you need to improve on then. You need to be more focused on your units. And the only way to improve on it is to try, right? And... I don't know, like, what league you are if you're watching this, but the lower league you are, the more likely it is your opponent's going to try to build a TC without units and build it in a dumb place. And this TC, by the way, guys, like, this TC is not even, like, a super risky TC. It's not, like, out on the map. It's within range of his other TC, and we still killed six villagers with two knights and basically just won the game. So from here, I noticed that, like, okay, you know, this is done, I gotta pull this knight away, we've done as much damage as we can do, I need to fix my resource allocation. So, I still have way too much gold and too much um, wood, so we drop an archery range, we drop a stable, and because of how much pressure I just put on and how much I delayed his TC, I knew that I could go ahead and just gather this boar, even though it's on his side of the map. And uh, the next knight shows up to see if he can do anything, he can't, so we just back away. And at this point, I really did, like, I know that I won the game. I really did. So this archery range will help us start spending our wood. And, um, I still have way too many on gold. I didn't fix that appropriately. Um, but it is what it is. We got, uh, going out for this food source as well as this boar here. And grabbing survival. We should be grabbing survival techniques, which we are. You always want to get survival techniques before you start gathering boar and deer. Um, it's, it makes a big difference on your gather rate. So, yeah, right now the food income is really hurting, but it's about to pop off when we start gathering this boar and this deer. All the new villagers going to food right now because we have way too much gold and this is something you guys can learn from as well like any time that you're macroing improperly if it's dramatically bad like let's say you have 13 on gold right now you can you would want to pull like five villagers right and um take them to food immediately but since it's just eight villagers on gold and we're just floating 500 gold for now um we're gonna spend a lot of gold on knights right so you don't really need to pull off the gold. Instead, you just need to send all your new villagers to um, food. And so we can start spending all of this gold. And you can also spend your gold on the blacksmith upgrades, which we're going to be doing here in a second. So from this point, what do we do? Um, I just got another villager kill on his berries, by the way. I sent a knight to the other side of the base. Because at this point, you know that he's going to be hurting for food, right? He's gone to TC. He's down six villagers. And, um, he's going to be hurting for food. He didn't get, he did not secure a food source with his TC. So I knew that he was going to be on these berries. It's a given. That's why the Grand Winery is here. So I send a knight over here, free villager kill, and he has to move off the berries. Um, all of my units are parked on these food sources here, the berries and the deer. And I'm going to continue to send all my new units here because... Once again, we don't want him gathering food. I'm taking the boar from him, and I don't want him to gather these uh, deer or berries. The more food he gets, the more units he can make, the more chance he has of coming back in the game. So what we're going to do is send all our new units here, continuously queue um, knights and archers, which, by the way, I'm not queuing knights right now because we're still waiting on the food to come in. 
because uh, these villagers had a lot of walk time to get over here, right? So that delayed our food income a bit. And then we're going to have other units just checking these occasionally. Like, you just, you want to have all of this scouted, and you want to be checking these resources. Now, unfortunately for our Byzantine friend, all of his food sources are very exposed and forward. So, we're just going to continuously check them. And I'm going to have, you see, I'll have this knight go out this way right now and just check. Even though it's, like, probably too early for him to have gone out here, just check real quick. And, uh, yeah, he's not here, he's not here, so then we can go back to pressure this. And just check that every once in a while. Now, right now, I actually probably could be putting more pressure on his woodline than I am. But that's okay. I wanted to get a little bit caught up here. Um, and now we're finally producing knights again. We got archers coming out. And our resource spending is getting a little bit better here. Um, especially once I turn in a, another round of the boar. We'll be in a, a pretty prime position. And... Um, from here, you really, like, there's the knight just sitting on the deer, right? You really, like, it's going to be hard to, to lose this game if you just execute properly, spend all your resources. And you can do one of two things here. Um, you can all in from this point and just keep checking the food sources. Or you can go castle and all in. And um, a lot of the times, I prefer to go castle as I all in. And just get those unit upgrades because it really secures you that that uh, advantage, that edge, that makes sure you're going to win the game. And I know that he's not going to be able to hit castle nearly as fast as me. I did not know when I was playing that I'd killed seven villagers, but I knew that I'd killed a lot, right? And I knew that I had delayed a second TC by a lot, so I knew that if he wants to make enough units to defend what I have here, then he's not going to reach castle anywhere near the time that I reach castle, right? So I just decide to keep making units for a bit. I go ahead and make the um, the chivalry because we have a very low health knight. And um, I don't know where the super low health knight went. And uh, now we're attacking the woodline. Free villager kill. And we'll back up. No need to overcommit. Oh, I shouldn't have lost that knight. But it is what it is. And we are... Um, I could have used the heal ability, maybe, to say, I guess I already used the heal ability. Anyways, I shouldn't have lost that knight, but it is what it is. We're, we're way ahead still, and, um, yeah, he's trying to counter-raid with Keshex now, but, I mean, it's going to be pretty easy to react to that with a few knights of our own in the base, um, especially with two stables. And, um, you can see we're still floating a little bit of gold here, but... We're starting to get to the point where we can spend it with the food we have as well. So I'm just going to keep making units here and pressuring very lightly as I macro towards castle. And his Keshiks are going to show up in my base, but um, it's, uh, it doesn't matter. Like, even if he kills a couple bills, like we're so far ahead now. And he's still not really doing anything with the Keshix. So I'm just continuously diving this woodline and pushing him off. And he doesn't... Have, look at how many units he has. And they're all spears, right? I have just as many archers as he has spears. And I have more knights than he has spears. And I have Jean. There's nothing he could do. I could maybe even dive and win the game right now. But I decided to play it a little more cautious. Because I think... I think that's the way to do it most of the time. Um, and you can see here, he just killed... He killed two bills with his Keshiks, but I killed another bill on his woodline as well, so. Now I can just send a couple units to chase off these Keshiks, no big deal. We're pressuring the woodline again, um, and there's nobody there, so I know that he's gonna have to be gathering wood, like, down here. And he actually has four Keshiks here, so I think I lose this knight, but, once again, it's not that big of a deal, you just... Just take your new knights and send them here. No need to pull back your whole forces to deal with a couple raids. That's a big mistake that people make in low leagues all the time. Um, instead, just send your new units to deal with this. this. So, And again, I'm going to push this woodline and I'm like, okay. Everything is kind of like... And I'm going to do some damage here, I think. Oh yeah, some good damage. Killed another villager. And we just back away. We're not going to take this fight under the TC. Oh, I guess we are. There's no spears. I mean, it's all spears. Right, and I got to cleave off. I'm sniping the spears. 
And uh, I do lose a knight or two, but like, we're, we're getting XP, and we're killing his whole army, right? That's his whole army gone. And I did end up losing Jean here. But after that, look, his whole army is gone, right? And this is when I decide to just go castle, for sure. Um, yeah, I could have microed that better. I could have pulled John back and everything else. But, I mean, any fight that results with you having 19 units and your opponent having one at the end, pretty good for you. Um, and we killed several more villagers there as well. So, yeah, I decided to just go castle here because it will, um... Give me an easier way to end the game, right? I can get range defense level 2 on my units. And um, you see, I'm still checking these food resources. Still checking these food resources. And now we're going to raid on this side as well. Hopefully. And there comes the Royal Institute. These knights are just sitting here. So lots of things even I could have improved on in this game even. But... I think you guys get the gist of this here, right? Like, it's way more important how you use your units than it is anything else, really. Like, it's it's way more important that you get value out of those early nights than it is, in my opinion, than it is to level Jean up as early as possible. I think it's still French at the end of the day, and you do want to level Jean up, and um, I never even killed this war with Jean because I forgot about it. But at the end of the day, it's more important to keep that pressure on, and um, that's that's what's going to win you games. And uh, now we pick Castle. In the moment, my unit... I've already built the RAM. Um, my unit upgrades are about to start coming in. And if he wants to take this fight here before my unit upgrades come in, we'll just pull back, right? And I'm also raiding on the other side. I just killed, like, four more villagers. We were only at, like, 12 villager kills before that. So, yeah. And he's not even- he's not gonna get these knights, right? He's just gonna be chasing while my whole army is over here, destroying his, uh, his production, his TC. So splitting your units into two groups is very, very effective, even just at a Conqueror level. I mean, even at a Conqueror- Conqueror level where players can, like, handle this kind of thing, it's uh, extremely effective. It's gonna be way more effective in lower leagues. Imagine if I had found this, though. Oof. But it doesn't matter. The game is really over at this point. And, um, unit upgrades. I haven't even started the knight upgrade, which is pretty bad. That could have started already. Um, but at this point, I just back up. Like, you can destroy this ram. It doesn't matter. I'm way, way far ahead. So we're going to build another ram. We're going to get our unit upgrades. There's the knight upgrade. There's the archer upgrade in queue. And it's the moment these upgrades come through... It's just pushing in the game. I'm going to fast forward from here. Because I want to talk about some other stuff in this guide. So, that's it. We're just going to push and win the game from here. He's still feudal, right? So, like, he has no chance in this fight. I lose Jean, but does it really matter? He focused down Jean and lost his whole army for it. So, it doesn't matter. And that's the game. Once again, that's against a very high-level player, so if you learn to, to use your knights like that in the beginning um, of the game, you're going to you're going to do very well for yourself. So I want to show you guys some other scenarios, though. And I think we're going to actually use some Twitch VODs for this, unfortunately, because uh, most of the replays don't save in the game. But I'm going to find Jean against Ottomans on Gorge here from uh, my random to conk challenge and just show you guys another scenario and we're going to go through this one a little bit faster because I don't have to explain quite as few as many things about this but um come on it was Jean versus Ottomans on Gorge there here it is this was two months ago now but still I think I think we can still learn something good from this game because it's about what to do when you feel like you can't push with the army you currently have, right? Like, you're, you're playing a very heavy feudal, and you run into, like, a base that you can't push. How do you respond? So, I'm going to fast forward through the early game.
So this is against an Ottoman player, and he decides to go 2TC. And um, there's really not a whole lot I can get done damage-wise um, in the early game, although I did just kill a villager there, so that was cheeky. Um, but this tower and then the second TC, it's just, there's not a lot of places to do damage, right? Let's fast forward a little bit more. And you should always go out for the boar, by the way, with Sean Dark, once you have map control. If you have map control, you should really be going out on the board most games. Um, you know, if you're playing against another Knight Civ, it can be very risky, right? You can see I'm making a decent amount of un units, I'm making knights and archers, but I just quickly realized there's nowhere to pressure. And I also added in Spears this game because he was making Sapaki, and uh, I wanted to respect those as well. I didn't want my archers to get caught without the knights and just die. So it's easier to have a few spears as well. The tri-unit composition is really strong. I'm fast forward a little bit more here. And we're just like, okay, he's not a... I'm checking the gold because I don't want him to age up. I know he's gone 2TC. And uh, yeah, you don't, you don't want him to age up as well as go 2TC. Um, so gold denial is one thing you can do very easily if they've gone to TC and they didn't put the TC on the gold, you can just deny gold and um, get yourself an advantage that way because you'll be spending gold on upgrades and castle age while they won't be able to spend gold. Um, but at this point I'm just like, okay, there's there's nowhere to break into this base and do damage um, as far as I could tell. Now maybe there was on the other side but where the TC is, but I wasn't sure, right? So what I decide to do Let's go castle and flood men at arms. After building plenty of units, right? And now I've seen I've seen a lot of games where lower league players here might just build rams and try to feudal all in an Ottomans player and possibly throw the game. But the guaranteed victory here is to deny gold. And um and go castle yourself and flood men at arms, which they can't respond to. So he's got a very compact base, right? It's very hard to do damage. And, um, yeah. The easiest way to make sure you can do damage is to go castle and get men at arms and, um, the range defense upgrade, and then you can just flood his base. So, that, here it is. At this point, I've, I've done what I can. I haven't taken any fights because he's not coming out of his base. I don't want to dive into his base and throw away my whole army. And um, my siege engineering didn't come through yet even, so I just decided to go castle. And notice that i have building more barracks. I've already got one barracks, I'm building another one. We're going to immediately upgrade our units that we have and just get some men at arms in there. And then just push in and fight while we have the castle age army. New age begins. Knight upgrade coming in. Archer upgrade coming in. Spearman upgrade coming in. And we're building men at arms. Five men at arms in the queue. And we're building a ram. Also, you can capture sacred sites with Jean Dark, by the way. So if you hit Castle Age and she's not level three, you can go get yourself experience by capturing the sites. And this is how you can fight against players who are kind of turtling right to avoid fighting you don't push into their base even if you have a bigger army it can it can be easy to push into their base and throw away your army and feudal when all you really needed to do was go castle get the right upgrades get the right unit comp and then you can push and win the game i see because of my walls some of these villagers aren't gathering on the gold which was kind of annoying but there I am, I'm cap I've already captured one site, and I'm capturing another with John now, just trying to level her up. And I'm waiting for a few minute arms to show up, building another ram. And there goes the level 3 John. 
So now my John's level 3. I've got men at arms in the queue. All my castle upgrades are coming in. The last one's about to come in now. Now is the perfect time to push. And I have a set always have a separate little group of knights raiding. Like with, with French or Jean d'Arc. And weren't like you know, I could have just lost all those knights there, and that would suck, but you gotta learn to um to micro two different groups at once without losing them. And the only way to do that is to practice it. That's something you're gonna hear me say a lot if you watch my channel. But people like to say, oh I can't do this, I can't do that, and like, well the only way you'll learn to do it is to practice it. And uh, so now we're pushing in, right? And he's gonna have to take the fight. By the way, when you fight against Ottomans, first thing you should target is the military schools. Or when you make a big push into the base. Always target the military schools. You do not want them pumping out free units. Uh, trying to get back into the game. But he has to take this fight at this point. And his units aren't upgraded yet. And, um, yeah. We have also got, like, with the other knights, we found his gold out on the map, so... No, what is Jean doing? And I throw away Jean like an idiot, but it doesn't even matter because I have the castle upgrades and I have the men at arms, and he has no counters to men at arms. And I've already got the Jean's champions on the field. So, that's GG. And, um, yeah. The other things I want to talk about. So, like, Beastie recently put out videos on how to play against Jean Dark, so you're going to see people playing a little bit better against Sean Dark and not fighting you in feudal as much and that's okay um because there's lots of ways to win the game still like that was a game like I just showed you he's turtling he's sitting in his base he's not taking fights on the map what do you do you go castle and you get men at arms so that way you can flood and push his base right and um there's other ways to deal with castle rush as well and I'm going to show you guys one more game this one is a very short one and, uh, yeah, that, this will conclude the guide. Um, thanks for hanging out this long, and I hope you're learning something. But, um, let's find it real quick. This game was just a couple days ago. And I'm playing against someone who's just straight rushing castle with a tower, trying to wall their base in. So how do you respond to this? And I'll show you how, exactly how, how you respond to this. Thankfully, we can do this in the caster mode in the game. Aha. Same early build order as usual. Same thing I showed you guys earlier. three villagers building it we finish our age up at like the 415 mark we've already got a knight in queue same exact thing going to build the mill so and now i've got 11 on food and i don't do this the same way every game because i'm not perfect but we do need to get some more um villagers onto gold and wood now and this time i'm going to go up to five on wood uh, five on gold, and that's because I just want to continuously produce knights here, and I know I'm about to go for a second stable as well. And so, what did I notice with my scout when I ran to his base? He's trying to full wall his entire base. So, I've shown you guys this before in a previous guide for French, but I just start using the scout to mess with him, right? So I put the scout here, and he tries to build a whole nother wall. And the point is just to delay this as long as we can until the knight gets here. So the scout will actually block him from building this wall here. And um, he manages to close it off in this regard. So I move the scout right again. I'm like, okay, we've got to, we've got to create a gap. So I move the scout to right here and stand. And here he is. By this point, I've delayed the wall enough that my knight got here. So. This villager's dead. This villager's dead. And this villager's dead. And this could have easily just been 
Oh, shit. I got to his base and it's walled already. But instead, we're killing three villagers, and we've created a gap into his base. You can't tell necessarily, but you can walk through this. So... At this point, I'm already suspicious that he's probably going for some kind of fast castle because of the walling. But um, now we go check the gold, right? And look at that mass exodus to the gold. Meanwhile, at home, I've gone up to six on wood. And hopefully I stop there, but that, that should be enough. We just want to get a second stable here. Because he hasn't built a single spearman, right? So why build archers? Stick with what's good. Stick with knights. We don't know what he's doing yet. And he may be rushing knights in castle, right? So you want to have your own knights and just kind of outproduce them. And that's my game plan here. So now we're going to check the gold. I should have been even a little faster here. Um, and he's rushing the tower. He's going to get it up. That's okay. Um, just back away. I'm taking actually too much damage here. I should have backed away even faster. And this is how you... I'm going to show you guys. This is how you can keep pressure on... When somebody's fast castling with the tower on the gold, and still like keep them on their toes, still maybe catch a few villagers, and get yourself an advantage because they haven't built a single unit, right? So you have to use your units to get advantage. Um, and it's it can be hard when there's a tower, but you can still get plenty of um, idle time and stuff like that. So. You just have to keep pressuring the tower, but not lose your knights to it. And I know that, that that sounds really obvious, and I'm making it sound easier than it is, but it is what you have to do. You need to dive towards the gold, but not take too much damage from the knights. On the knights. So that's what we're doing. We're, idle, we were, we're idling 10 villagers right now. right? And this knight, he's done for. He's going to sit until we have healing. This knight's ready to go in, though. And I'm just streaming knights. And I built a second stable with that extra wood I had. I went down to 5 on wood. And everything... Now I've got 12 on food, 8 on gold, which I think is pretty good. Everything else is going to go to... Uh, should be going to food. I shouldn't put too many more on gold. Uh, right now I'm queuing to gold, but... We can also get this boar, because we have full map control. And we're just going to keep idling. Keep idling the gold without losing knights. These knights are too low health. Don't use them. Don't lose a knight for this. You just want to get some kind of value out of the knights and delay him as much as possible, right? So notice I'm getting chivalry really early because we already have low health knights, several of them. And now I've got a big group here that can charge the gold mine. And we can also park our, our units right here and... Uh, That was very close, but I still didn't lose a knight. And now I have the healing has come in. But you can also park your knights here and uh, be denying some of the resources from the meditation gardens. Um, I'm moving out for the boar at this point. I've got 10 villagers on gold, which is probably too many. But everything's going to a um, going to to food now. And once again, we made sure to get survival techniques before we went out for the bowl. The boar. <laughs> And I, I kind of wish we had had wheelbarrow as well, but that's okay. We're getting it now. Um, you do want to get these upgrades. Like, wheelbarrow should be prioritized first, and then probably survival techniques. You should also go for these upgrades and at some point in Feudal, most games, as well as this. You just get all the upgrades in Feudal at some point. Um, but let's keep talking about, like, the tower here. So, I'm going to let these knights heal a little bit. And actually, I learned this here while I was doing this. Your knights aren't going to heal while they're attacking the meditation garden, so you need to actually have them idled somewhere for them to heal. Um, and now he's reached castle, right? And I've killed three workers already, though, um, from the walling. And I have full map control, and I have way more units than him. I have knights, which is what he's going to be going for. He's going for knights, so... It doesn't matter that he has Castle Age Knights when I have way more Knights than him, right? My Knights will just destroy his. Still just flooding my units in um, through this hole in the wall, because that's the only way into his base. And John is showing up as well now. And I pull these off for a minute just so they can start healing. Please 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 start healing. There it is. So, 
Once again, just diving the gold a little bit. There's a kill. That's, you know, see, you can dive the gold over and over again, and eventually you are going to kill a villager, right? Like, they're not going to be perfect response. They're not going to respond perfectly every time. So now, what do I need to worry about? His knights are going to be coming to my base, right? So I do need to be worried about that. But I still have knights all in his base. He's he's struggling to gather gold. He's struggling for food. And now I'm starting a second little control group here to start pressuring these berries. And meanwhile, we've never built another unit instead of knights, right? Because there's no reason to build archers this game. He didn't build any spears, right? No reason. So... Now we, once again, we can charge this uh, outpost with the knights, and at the same time I have a second group that's charging the berries now, because he is struggling for food. And we'll pull this back pretty quickly, because once again we don't want to lose knights to a tower. But we just killed two villagers here, and now we've killed seven villagers. We might have killed three villagers here. Now we've killed seven villagers, he's killed zero. His first knight's showing up at my base, and I wasn't quite ready for it, to be honest. So I think I end up losing a bunch of villagers to it. Because I wasn't expecting him to go straight to my base with his knights. But at the end of the day... I don't know how many villagers he ends up killing. But we retreat here, and I just... All you gotta do here is just send a couple knights and keep them at home to defend this. Meanwhile, we are attacking the gold again. We're attacking the berries again. And he has no food. And he, he's struggling for gold as well, right? And look at the army value. I've got 3190 in army value. I've got 13 knights plus Sean. He's got two knights and a crossbow and a Shaolin monk. So, at this point I am losing several villagers here to this. I think I end up losing like five or six. But... We've already got ourselves such an advantage that it doesn't even matter. And I will chase this knight away eventually. I think I do lose a lot of villagers here, though, because I'm focused on so many different things at once, right? I was focused on this knight, and I was focused on attacking here, and here, and I just... I lost track of this knight, and it's a big mistake, but at the end of the day, we've already got ourselves such an advantage in this game, it's going to be just fine. So now the villager kills are actually, like, even... But, we're going to take care of this little raid here. And now the big ones. We're ready for the big one, right? I know that he's got to be running out of food, so I move in on these berries again. And I move on on the gold at the same time. Idle all of the berries. Just pull back. Now, we're killing the bills on the gold. Three more bill kills. He was also moving out this way to try to get more food, because he, like, like I said, he's struggling for food. So, I just decide to dive these villagers and get some more kills here. Now we're on 14 villager kills. And, um, I decide to dive even further. He's- all of this is idled, by the way. All of this is idled. So he has 11 idols out of 25 villagers working. Meanwhile, we're cleaning up the knights in my base. And just leaving a few knights at home just to, like, patrol and make sure that, um, we don't take more damage. And this game is in the bag. More vills here. 15 vill kills now. And we dive here. More vill kills. 20 villager kills. He's now on 17 villagers. Game over. And this is something you're going to be running into a lot. Because Beastie has put out the guides. And he said like. Hey like a lot of the times you want to rush castle versus Sean. You know and get crossbows. And that's what this guy's going for right. So this is how you respond to things like that. If they're rushing castle with zero units, just make knights and put as much pressure as you can. Knights can tank damage from towers, right? So, yeah. I mean, my other choice would have been to rush castle myself, but I think what I did was much stronger, a much stronger play to just build the knights and um, do as much damage as I can, use my map control, and use the the... The, the knights, use the knights, right, that I built while he decided to invest in Castle Age, so. Guys, I think that's going to do it for the guide. Like, 
like it said, it's not really like a full build order guide. It's not like a one track do this every game. It's more of like, you know, how to respond to different situations and uh, what to do when it feels like you can't attack your opponent. So I hope this guide was pretty helpful. Um, if you have questions, drop them in the comments below. Um, obviously, there's things I didn't cover about Jean d'Arc because we didn't really go deep into Castle Age or Imperial Age. But if you do go deep into those ages, um, you know, the most important thing is get that upgrade in the blacksmith that lets you get reduced costs on your, um, your siege and all of that because it will reduce the cost even further for your consecrated buildings with, um, it'll reduce the wood cost and the gold cost as well as the food or something, something or another like that. And it's a very important upgrade, but I never even get to that point in the game, guys. I just, I do this one TC either feudal or or early castle all in every game and it works very very well um other things we didn't talk about is consecration but like like you guys have already seen guides for that like you've seen beastie like i would i always consecrate my tc first then go for the night the stables and then if you have other types of military production buildings you can go for those as well if you're going to flood men at arms you consecrate the barracks if you're going to flood crossbows you consecrate the archery range if you're going to flood knights you consecrate the stables it's very simple straightforward stuff with the consecration and um yeah this isn't really like a microwing jean d'arc guide or anything like that it's more of like how to respond to what your opponents are doing to counter jean d'arc and how to win the games anyways right so i hope you learned something if you have, like i said if you have questions drop them in the comments like comment subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching